Hello everyone and welcome back to Weather on the Go. All your weather coverage on this last Sunday of September. It is Sunday, September 29th, 2024. And in today's weather forecast, we're going to be going over the short range and the long range forecast throughout the week. The tropical weather update at the end of the video. So if you are not a subscriber to the channel, consider subscribing down below as we are getting very close to 100,000 subscribers. And I can also provide you with those short range, long range outlooks as well. And also season weather outlooks throughout the year. Make sure to like the video by giving it a thumbs up, especially if you do enjoy it. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those after my video. So let's look here at the weather alerts across the lower 48 here on this Sunday. And we have a lot of pinks up here across the Dakotas, Nebraska, getting down into the front range into eastern Colorado, much of the state of Wyoming as well. And then into parts of Montana and the Pacific Northwest, we have a lot of colors up here. Some of them do indicate freeze watches and high wind warnings and even some of them are red flag warnings that's what those pinks are and just looking at the soil moisture here this is very important and driving factor behind those red flag warnings is we have very dry soil in these areas in particular too though the upper midwest is very dry from august 31st to around yesterday when this was calculated and looking at those wind gusts it's going to be a pretty breezy day across the northern and northwestern united states and wind us here, especially in those higher elevations into Montana and western Wyoming could be peaking near 60, 61 miles per hour. And when that is coinciding with dry soil, warmer temperatures, that's why those red flag warnings have been hoisted by your local National Weather Service offices. And the Storm Prediction Center also forecasts fire concerns as well. Here's their fire weather outlook across the Dakotas today down into northwest Nebraska. There is a critical fire weather concern. So Make sure to not burn across those areas in any leaves or anything like that. Hold off on doing so. And then into central and northern Nebraska tomorrow on Monday, those critical fire weather concerns are there with elevated fire weather concerns outside of that as we go into Monday. Looking at that temperature anomaly going through today, we have some very warm temperatures for late September standards across the northern U.S. and southern Canada. You can see temperatures are easily up to 35 degrees above the norm for this time of year. A little bit cooler across the southeast and also across western Canada, the Pacific Northwest, as we have a couple of troughs in those areas. But looking here, we have a high temperature today into the 90s across the Dakotas, parts of eastern Montana, down into Wyoming here, 80s further south across the central and the southern plains. A little bit cooler, we have a trough of low pressure across the eastern, southeastern U.S. That will keep us with cloud cover, some precipitation today, so temperatures will be held down to the 60s and 70s. And a little bit cooler with a trough of low pressure in western Canada, the Pacific Northwest. Temperatures there will also be in the 50s and 60s this afternoon afternoon. Here are those troughs. We got that low pressure up here and actually providing us with snow showers in those higher elevations of southwest Canada into British Columbia and Alberta, but also that remnants here of what was Helene is continuing to bring some moisture across the east as we go into this afternoon and this evening. But most of the contiguous United States, if you do see that, you can see it's pretty dry as we go into tonight. And you can see a lot of the rainfall is going to be absent across the lower 48 except for the east if you live in West Virginia especially the panhandle region of West Virginia northwestern Virginia that's where we could see up to an additional inch of rain as we go through your Monday morning commute and then with the trough across southwest Canada southern Canada that could bring us some more rain for British Columbia Alberta central and northern Saskatchewan and northern Manitoba as we go through the day on Monday let's look at the North American view of the height anomalies and basically to break this down for you through the week this is from Monday tomorrow through September 30th all the way through Friday uh, this is should actually say 1004 this is through October 4th and you can see a low pressure system up here into portions of central Canada we have high pressure building across the west and what this is going to do is bring cooler air to the north across western Canadian provinces uh, but warmer temperatures with the ridge further off to the south so you see as the uh, Sacramento Valley in California the desert southwest we're going to start to see those 
warmer temperatures through the week. So let's walk you through that as we go through the day here on Monday, a nice refreshing air across the east. Get outdoors and enjoy it here with outdoor activities, walking, jogging, walking the dog, anything here. Uh, cooler weather across the west and the northwest, can't complain. And then hotter down here into areas like Phoenix to 97 tomorrow, 93 in San Diego. As we go into Wednesday, even hotter, 103 in San Diego, 101 in the Phoenix region. So make sure you're staying hydrated down there. And then by the end of the week, we're still looking at upper 90s to low triple digits from San Diego to Phoenix and everywhere in between. And cooler air across the north. This includes southern Canada, but also the northern tier of the United States. And do note, we're still in the 90s on Friday, October 4th across Oklahoma and parts of Texas over here into Arkansas and Louisiana. So again, make sure to stay hydrated. It is into early October here through this week, but that doesn't mean we still can't see warmer temperatures. So again, hydration is key. Looking at precipitation through the week, it looks pretty dry across most of southern Canada and the United States in general. A lot of the blues are down here in the Gulf of Mexico. We'll talk about that here momentarily, but through the week, you can see here on Monday, we got a stronger low pressure up there in northern Manitoba. That could bring us some widespread rain showers, some rumbles of thunder, and even some unsettled weather across the southeast here as well on Monday. As we go into Wednesday, pretty quiet day, double-barreled area of high pressure, one over here into the Rockies, another one into the mid-Mississippi Valley, sun splash skies as we go into the midweek time frame, and that will continue largely on Friday. A little bit of a cold front across the north could bring us some isolated to scattered showers across parts of the Great Lakes. No all-day washouts. There will be plenty of dry hours, So, but just have an umbrella handy just in case as we go into the late week time frame. Here are the rainfall amounts across North America, across Southern Canada. Hit or miss rain showers could you know, lead to a half inch into rain, especially there into Northern Manitoba. A lot of precipitation on the west coast of Canada there into western British Columbia and the Gulf of Alaska up there as well. And then pretty dry out west. And then we have some moisture across the east here. And some of that will fall around an inch of rain between Monday tomorrow on September 30th through Friday, October 4th. We could see up to an inch of rain there, especially into eastern West Virginia, into the Panhandle region, into the state of Virginia and Maryland as well. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Turning over to the tropical weather update. Now this is climatology for the Atlantic hurricane season. We are past the peak now and we're starting to climb the ladder downward but we are starting to see a lot of activity out here in the Atlantic Ocean it's been delayed the start of the season we had a lot of dry air we had a lot of Saharan dust move across the Atlantic Basin but right now things are very active we have Isaac way up here um, well away from North America that's heading toward Europe we also have Joyce that just formed and then a couple areas with tropical waves coming off the African coast those are mainly going to be fish storms but the one we're keeping Keeping a close eye on here, especially in the wake of Hurricane Helene that made landfall in Florida, is this 50% chance of development over here in the Western Caribbean and leading into the Central Gulf over the next five to seven days. Now, after Helene moved through, this was a Category 4 system that did cool our water temperatures off a little bit closer to Florida, but look at the Western Gulf, the Bay of Campeche, the Central Gulf, still 29, 30, 31 degrees Celsius with those sea surface temperatures. Still plenty warm to support tropical storm activity, hurricane, and even major hurricane activity moving forward. Here are some ensemble members. We look at ensembles when we're looking at something longer range. Here's the European ensemble members for a week from now. This is Sunday, October 6th. Look at all the fish storms out here trying to develop across the Atlantic Basin. This will be no problem, here, really even for Bermuda either. And then looking at the Gulf, we have to watch something here. There's a flip of a coin. We could have a system develop here in the Western Caribbean more so into the Central Gulf near the United States on the Euro ensembles, on the GFS ensemble. This is the American ensemble guidance. Same thing, fish storms out here in the middle of the Atlantic Basin, watching for a system down here into the Gulf. And then the CMC ensemble. This is the Canadian ensemble guidance, kind of hinting at that same thing. We got fish storm activity out here in the Central Atlantic and then more activity developing in the Gulf. Long term, the experts over there at the Climate Prediction Center are forecasting some pretty active weather 
better as we go through the middle of October. So you can see the deep reds here. That means we're going to have to watch the Atlantic Basin with these tropical waves coming off of Africa into the main development region, taking a run at the Windward Islands or Bermuda, and then also down here in the Western Caribbean and the Bay of Campeche up into the Gulf. We'll have to watch at least through October 8th. And then we're going to continue to see that into the second week of October, the 9th through the 15th, watching those waves come off of Africa, but more so the Bay of Campeche, the Gulf, and the Western Caribbean into the middle of the month. So we'll continue to watch the tropics as it does remain active and really ramping up over the next couple of weeks as well. So subscribe to the channel for the latest weather information right at your fingertips, folks. We're almost to 100,000 subscribers. You can help me get there simply by pressing that subscribe button if you haven't already. Make sure to like the video, give it a thumbs up down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their weekend out there.